Hey guys, and welcome back to another murder mystery video. So this murder was a crime that actually shook Australia. I will be sticking to Australian crimes for a while because it's something that I am very interested in. And then when I am comfortable enough, I will start to go into international crimes. So this crime has been brought up numerous times since 2012, since this murder happened. And it was actually brought up maybe a few months ago when a young girl was walking home and was raped and murdered. I do want to start off with a quote that I heard when I was researching this case. If you go on Netflix, there's a documentary called The Convicted, and it is about the crime from solving it and the murderer, and it goes much more deeper into about the murderer and his past. So one of the officers had this beautiful quote that I really impacted me when I heard him say this because it is just so so true. I am going to read off a piece of paper because I want to make sure I say it right. She is now remembered of the last CCTV footage of her, the night she met a monster, but she was much more than a moment in time. So if you know this case about Jill Murr, and I'm really sorry if I just butchered her last name, but I've heard it different everywhere. So I'll just say that and then I will just say Jill from now on. If you live in Australia, this CCTV footage was shown all the time and it was shown everywhere and it is of her walking past the bridal shop and actually her murderer walking before she went past and then turning around going back and then coming back and following her and approaching her. And that was the last time Jill was seen. So Jill was a 29 year old Irish woman living in Melbourne, Australia and working at the ABC, which is a communication broadcasting company. They do TV and radio. On the 21st of September, Jill and her co-workers decided to grab some afternoon drinks and they attended the Green Bar that was located in Brunswick, Sydney Road. So Brunswick is just an area where you can go grab a few drinks. It's very chill. I find Melbourne a very like calm city. This area was majority just pubs and just like just a very chill vibe. And later that night, they decided to go to another pub of Etiquette Bar, which was located on the same road, Sydney Road. At 1.30, Jill decided it was time to go home and she actually lived pretty close to the location and she decided to walk home. On her way home, she did call her brother and they did discuss her father. In the morning, Jill's husband, Tom, realized that Jill hasn't returned home. So he decided to call her friends and the coworkers that were out with her that previous night. And no one knew where she was. The last thing they knew was that she actually left to come home. So this case brought in social media and it helped tremendously and it impacted Facebook and Twitter so much. Jill's colleagues were very concerned about Jill so they decided to tweet on their ABC Twitter account which has like a lot of followers. They decided to start a Facebook page, help us find Jill. And this was on the 23rd of September and this page received over 100,000 likes. So the police was brought into the case and they did a thorough search throughout the alleyways and Sydney Street where she was last located and they found no clue. So on the 24th, randomly, the police found her purse. The police was really shocked to find this purse because they did a thorough search of this area so they don't understand how they could miss it but it was in a location where it was like a seeable so it was obvious that someone has actually come back and put the handbag there and the handbag was actually found close to her home so this is the part where the cctv comes in on the 25th of september duchess boutique which was a bridal store handed in their cctv as the police would use this to find her killer so this CCTV shows Jill walking past the store but stopping halfway as a man approaches her from behind to start a conversation with her. But four minutes before this, this man was seen coming the other way and then he's obviously gone up the street, seeing Jill, do a turn and follow her.
We know that she crossed the road after leaving Bar Etiquette with her friends. She walked north on Sydney Road until she got to this store, the, a bridal boutique store, and CCTV footage captured her at this point being approached by a man. They spoke for about 40 to 45 seconds, which police said seemed casual by appearance, that possibly they didn't know each other and they were engaging in casual conversation. She continued to walk past the store after speaking to him for 40 to 45 seconds and stopped here, got out her phone, seemed to be to fumbling around with it, and police say she might have then been speaking to her brother in Perth. But once she took her final steps past the boutique store, She's not been seen since, and police are hoping that this CCTV footage and people coming forward, perhaps as eyewitnesses, will help piece together her last movements. So obviously the police wanted to locate this man as he was the last person to see Jill. A lot of people did assume that her husband Tom was the murderer, and the police had to treat him like he was a suspect, which is very common in cases of domestic violence or partners getting murdered or killed because normally it is someone close to them that does do this. On the 27th of September, Adrian Ernest was arrested as he was believed to be the man in the video. And while being questioned, Adrian did break down and admit that he did kill and rape. Jill. And that same day, Adrian did lead to police to where he did bury her body in a shallow grave. If you do watch the documentary, they do show you where the um, body was found and they go into deeper details of that night because he did break down, so people witnessed him there as well. So it was later found out that Adrian did strangle, rape and kill Jill. So when this case came out and Adrian was arrested for her murder and the and the information started to come out in the news, Australia was so, so disappointed and so angry that a woman could not walk home without being raped, murdered or killed. Australia was furious, like literally furious that a woman could not walk home without something happening like this. They hurled candlelight visuals for Jill and a massive walk was held down Sydney Road. So it was huge. So I really wanted to talk about Adrian, who was the murderer of Jill. He was a horrible, horrible man. And honestly, I'm, I'm gonna say this, the Australian system failed Jill and every other woman he has done this to because he is a repeat offender. He should have been in jail and the and after the fact that the police admit that he should be in jail. So obviously this crime shouldn't have never happened and he should be in jail rotting. So Adrian was a serial rapist. and It was believed that he has raped two dozen women before he ended up killing Jill. So he was convicted of sexual acts against five women and three of those being underage. Oddly enough, Adrian was never put on the sex offenders list, which is a list that we have here with, if you've done a sexual crime, you are put on this list and you can look it up and you can see who is on this list. So one of the sexual attacks he did was on a sex worker and she did go to the police, which they contained DNA and they kept that on the file. But this DNA was actually lost in the system. It was revealed that Adrian would stalk his victims he would take them into laneways and and trap them in his car. So these were premeditated crimes. He was he planned everything to a T. One victim did say that when she was in the process of getting raped, he she felt that he just wanted the power, which is what you feel like when you talk about rape. It's definitely a power thing. He did say to her while he was raping her, look who has the power. See, I can get whatever I want. So that just shows what a sick man he was. Adrian, when Adrian was convicted of Jill's murder, he did get life in prison and then he got an extra 10 years for three crimes he did get convicted for. Adrian is eligible for parole in 2058 and he will be 86 years old. So Adrian actually has been attacked in jail and 
he received minor injuries and he was stabbed. So I have only gone over the basics and I really highly recommend watching The Convicted because it does go deeper in like I have mentioned. I just really wanted to talk about this topic because it is a topic that we are so passionate about that people cannot walk home and I'm not just going to say women, people cannot walk home without feeling unsafe and it is sad that we live in a world that you always have to watch behind your back and it is sad that this system that we're supposed to have to protect our community failed so many women across the board and he was a free man like he should be he should have been in jail but if adrian was in jail this would never happen and jill would still be alive and that is factor i want you to take away is this man is sick in the head and the system failed us and it's really sad that so many things have to happen before the system decides to pull the reins it is crazy in australia that you see people do these nasty crimes against women men children and then you find out what their punishment is and it is nothing compared to what you think that they deserve which is really sad and i feel like a lot of people in australia do agree that the system is failing our community i do want to say that i remember a few months ago when a comedian was walking home in melbourne she was walking home after a gig and she walked through a oval and a man raped and killed her and if you know Lisa Wilkinson, she is a news reporter in Australia. She is on the project at the moment. And she had a, an amazing segment about this case and about women. Now, I wanted to take a minute here, if I could, to talk about the advice that's been given in the wake of Eurydice Dixon's death. Every day, women are told how to behave, what to wear, where to go, and where to avoid for their safety. And I'm not sure we should be listening to every word of advice. If you're a woman living in 2018, you'll be very familiar with this advice. Take responsibility for your safety. Make sure that you have situational awareness. Make sure that people know where you are and that, you know, if you've got a mobile phone, carry it. People need to be aware of their own personal security. So much advice, so many rules around what we should do and what we shouldn't. It's hard to keep track of just how we're supposed to keep ourselves safe. Don't go out at night. Don't walk alone. Don't wear short skirts. Don't draw attention to yourself. Don't find yourself near strange men. These are things women have to seriously consider on a daily basis. Every single day we're assessing potential threats around us. Often we get that awful feeling in the pit of our stomach, a feeling Eurydice and Marsha, not to mention Anita Cobby and Jill Ma, no doubt felt when their young lives were cut short. These are names we shouldn't know. These women and so many others like them should be out there just going about their lives, spending time with their families, being a wife, a mother, a sister, a daughter, a friend, just like you and me. Already this year, 31 women in Australia have been murdered. All but three of those were allegedly killed by male perpetrators. Women killed at the hands of violent men. Yet it's women who are being asked to change their behavior Look, I have huge sympathy for the police. They're tasked with the impossible job of keeping us all safe. So of course, they're gonna say anything they can to do that. The problem is when they say this. Take responsibility for your safety. Make sure that people know where you are and that you know if you've got a mobile phone, carry it. Did you hear that? We're the ones who have to take responsibility. They're focused on how to prevent this crime at the individual or micro level. If one woman doesn't walk at night, that one woman won't be attacked. But the problem with giving this... The problem with giving this advice is that it keeps that one woman safe at the expense of all women's right to move freely. We need our leaders to think and speak at the macro level. And the best way to prevent this crime and keep all women safe isn't by changing the behaviour of women, but by changing the behaviour of men. This might upset some people, but honestly, parents, instead of telling our girls not to walk through parks, 
Maybe we should be telling our boys not to rape them. Margaret Atwood, the author who wrote the dystopian feminist novel, The Handmaid's Tale, more than 30 years ago, captured the imbalance we're talking about here. When she remarked, men are afraid that women will laugh at them. Women are afraid that men will kill them. There is not much like in-depth detail about this case so it, this video is just a very broad brief of everything that I have researched and everything that we know they did not go into detail and I cannot find the detail if you like this video make sure you give it a thumbs up and please request some crimes that you know that I can do a video about I would really love to hear your opinion and what you're into I upload every Monday Wednesday and Friday and I'll see you in my next video Bye, guys.